We've, we've all been there, right? Well, most of us have anyway. <laughs> you're at the grocery store or, you know, you're, you stop at a gas station on a road trip or even worse, at a restaurant. It's such a little thing, but if overlooked, it can become a pretty big deal, right? <laughs> I'm not going to ask you how you got out of your predicament. Let's just say that I don't have that problem anymore. Uh, we have a guest bathroom at our house, just off of the living room. And at home, <clears throat> we have these uh, toilet paper bandits. Yeah, and, and, and they don't leave a roll with a couple pieces on it. They take the whole thing. And then if you leave an extra roll in there to make sure that doesn't happen, they take that one too. Rather than just walk another 10 feet to where we keep all the toilet paper, you can have as much as you want, they take it from the guest bathroom. <laughs> and we call it the guest bathroom, but really that's the most used bathroom in the house. But because of these toilet paper bandits, the absolute first place I look when I go to the bathroom anywhere is their toilet paper. <laughs> Point is, small things can impact us in big ways. The Olympics, you know, a small tenth of a second is the difference between a, a gold medal and a bronze. When we were younger, uh, you could say that my brother and I were kind of uh, thrill-seekers, and rarely did it ever work out in an adventure that we can look back on with this discovery of something cool, but rather it usually ended up with either one of us or both of us in a dangerous situation. I remember one year down in the Florida Keys, my brother and I found this boat that had sunk underneath the Bahia Honda Bridge. We thought, we need money to spend in the arcade. There's got to be sunken treasure in there. So we, we go back to the campsite. We get all our snorkeling gear, and we, we book it back to the bridge. We dive down, and we go inside of this boat. And it was amazing swimming around this probably 40, 50-foot boat that it, right there in the shallows. Very dangerous, but amazing. Like I said, we were, we were thrill-seekers. Uh, about 10 minutes into this adventure... We both almost at the same time surface, and we realize that we're both starting to feel this intense burning sensation all over our bodies. And we thought, that's weird. We're in the water. Why do I feel like I'm on fire? I'll stop here and ask, have any of you ever been covered in fiberglass? No. I see some heads nodding yes. Yeah, so it feels like being covered in fire ants or bee, I don't know, it, it's horrible. But apparently, since this boat was in the shallow water, and, and you know, as time goes on, the fiberglass starts to shed. And in this situation, since it was in the shallow water and there was no real current, it just settled right there at the bottom. And so when Jeff and I got in there and we're flipping our fins around, we just stirred everything up. We were covered in it. We ran back to the showers to try to wash it off with warm water, but really that's all you can do in that situation. We had a rough next couple days. No buried treasure, but yeah, that, that was terrible. But it's crazy how something that, that's barely visible, if at all, I mean, little tiny particles of fiberglass, can dramatically alter your plans. But there's something else that impacts our lives. It has no mass. It's something you can't smell, you can't touch it, you can't taste it or see it or hear it. And it's controlling your life. And yet most of us, we completely overlook it. We see it as insignificant, harmless, Yet even now, it's running your life. You know what it is? It's your beliefs. C.S. Lewis says, you never know how much you really believe anything until its truth or falsehood becomes a matter of life and death. It's easy to say you believe a rope to be strong as long as you are merely using it to cord a box. But suppose you had to hang by that rope over a precipice. Wouldn't you then first discover how much you really trusted it? In Scripture, belief can make all the difference. It can be the difference between walking on water and sinking, Matthew 14, 31. The difference between being blind and being able to see, Matthew 9, 29. Between being sick and being healed, Matthew 8, 13. Do you remember how much faith, how much belief it takes to move a mountain? Matthew 17, 20. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there 
and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Belief is the difference between being accepted or rejected. Hebrews 11.16, it's impossible to please God without first believing He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. Beliefs are one of those little things that we just don't really think about very much. We don't really realize or acknowledge just how powerfully influential they are on all of us. Beliefs don't even have to be true to impact us. Have you ever wondered how they keep those, the elephants under control at the circus? It doesn't make any sense. Why would something so large respond to this tiny human? Do things that don't come natural to that animal. As babies, the elephants, they're, they're conditioned to believe that they can't break through a simple little rope. They tie a rope around a baby elephant's foot. And as a baby elephant, they're not strong enough to break through this rope. The rope is actually enough to hold them at that. But as they get older and they get larger, they could snap that rope with very little effort. But they never do. Why? This rope has kept them in bondage their whole life. And they believe that it still can. They don't believe they're strong enough to break through that rope. The ones you may have seen on the news or on some video where the you know like circus animals going wrong or something like that and they're going crazy that's because that animal's probably sick and it's just lashing out at the first thing it sees it doesn't know its own strength beliefs right or wrong they shape how we think they impact what we do they influence who we become our beliefs are what lead us around look over history some of the best things that man has ever done were acted upon because of what they believed. And some of the ugliest things that man has ever done were, again, the result of things they believed. Think about it. Beliefs move us. They shape us. They make us. They can break us. Beliefs can unite us. They can divide us. They can free us, or they can enslave us. Beliefs are one of the, the largest influential factors in your entire life. If that's so, do you think that your beliefs matter? I believe. Say that with me. I believe. Yeah, you do believe. But what do you believe? Even more, the better question is, who do you believe? What's the source of the beliefs that you have? Realize this, whoever is informing our beliefs has incredible control over our lives. So it's not just what I believe, it's the who. Who influences the what? So who is the one you trust above all others? Who decides for you what's true and what isn't? This morning, I want us to kind of run through a few of our options. Our first option is it you? Are you the who? Are you your own source of what you believe? The arbiter of what is true and trustworthy. It's certainly an option, Hamlet, Act 1, Scene 3, to thine own self be true, right? Maybe the only person you really trust is you. We all have our own opinion on everything. It used to be you have your opinion and, and I have mine, but opinion is not the same as truth. At least that's the way it used to be anyway. It seems as though today, feelings and facts have become a blurred line. Some people believe some crazy things out there. Even in the church. Did you guys hear about the male stripper that was invited to perform a routine at a Christian men's conference? Did you guys hear about that? It was the opening act. There was only one man who had the courage and strength to call it out for what it was. Sin. Pastor Mark Driscoll. And he was promptly kicked off the stage. We've got this idea of if it makes me feel good, it must be from God. And if it, anything that makes me feel bad, well, that's got to be from the devil. Some of us believe that. We live that way. We say things like, you have your truth and I have my truth. You know, Here's a truth. There's a truth. Everywhere's a truth. It just depends on what you're looking for and where you're looking for it. 
Society says everyone can believe whatever they want, no, no matter how big of a complete contradiction it is. And it's not just okay, it's good. It's right, even if it's wrong. So you trust yourselves above all others. That used to be me. I, no one knows me better than me. But let's pick this one apart. Proverbs 16, 25. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. Just because it seems good to you, that doesn't mean that good things are coming. Your feelings will lie to you. I'll prove it to you. Raise your hand if you've ever followed your feelings and it got you into trouble. Yeah. <laughs> okay, raise your hand if you've ever made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, how about this one? Have you ever thought something was true only to find out later that it was false? Yeah, that one hurts. So by your own admission, your feelings have betrayed you. We have all been and gotten it wrong. And yet, for some of us, the only person you trust has betrayed you and been wrong often. I'll let you think on that for a second. If you are the best you got, we are all in a bunch of trouble. Okay, so let's explore our other option. Other people. Are other people a good source of truth? Most of us watch some form of news, whether it's, you know, the news broadcaster or big tech or Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, scientists, doctors, Wikipedia, Google, whatever. But all of these are sourced by truth. Sharing of biased and false, false news has become all too common on social media. media. More alarming Hmm. Are they the arbiters of truth? There's not a whole lot they can say anymore that I would believe. Okay, let's work through this one. Has anyone ever given you bad advice? How many of you have ever told a lie? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands here. But you're good moral people, and you lie? How many of you believe... Again, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. How many of you believe that all people lie? So, if you believe all people at some point tell lies, does it really seem like people who lie are a good source of truth? Did you know for this reason we're told to test what people say? 1 John 4, 1. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Okay, so let's quickly review. Beliefs matter because they influence our entire lives. What we believed is, is informed by our sources, so it's imperative that, we, that our sources are 100% true. But all men are liars. I mean, I lie, you lie, we all lie. Therefore, People are not a good source of truth that I can base my beliefs on. It, so if you're not a reliable source and other people aren't a reliable source, what's left? What do we have left? All people lie. All people are wrong sometimes. I mean, most of the time, a lot of the time. So there's, there is a source that is never wrong. Is there a source that is never wrong? Yes. We have a better option. What makes us a Christian is we are, I heard someone say, yes, we've already arrived at the answer to that question, right? Some of you knew where I was going with this for the last 10 minutes. There is a better source, and it's not me, and it's not you. There is someone who is trustworthy, competent, who never lies, who has proven to be an accurate guide, honest and authentic, the real deal. Who is he? If you know the answer, who is he? Jesus, yes. Jesus or God, both work. Once you finally arrive at this place, it makes things so much simpler. Not easier, but simpler. 
Romans 3, 4 says, let God be true and every man a liar. In other words, the Apostle Paul, he made it clear first, I believe God over any other. You need to decide, do you? Do you believe you? Do you believe others over God? Who's shaping what you believe? Somebody is. For most things where we agree, it's really not a big deal. But what about when we don't see eye to eye? When you have to choose. Someone's right and someone's wrong. How do you decide who's right? We all believe something. The question is, who do you believe above all others? Let me put it another way. What, do you, what you believe about this book matters a great deal. As a believer, what influence does this book have over your life? I've seen many play games with this in the church. You know, kind of picking and choosing the parts of the Bible that they'll follow and that they won't follow because it doesn't fit what, how they want to live their life. And it never ends well. Jesus validated this book. The Bible is not just in agreement with him. He is the author of the book. He is the Word made flesh. This contains his teachings, teachings that we can know and find truth and that can set you free. John 8, 31 through 32. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I believe. Say it again with me. I believe. Yes, you do. But who do you believe? You? Others? Or Jesus? Does this book... Well, it's gone now. Does the Bible impact none of your beliefs? A few of your beliefs? Some of your beliefs? Most of your beliefs? Or all of your beliefs? Everyone here is one of those. Which one are you? Someone is your final authority. What we need to figure out is who. Is the Bible your final authority or is someone else? How you answer that question matters. Someone or something is steering your beliefs. Who is it? Who wins your trust when there's a conflict? When there's a question? When there's uncertainty? Do you trust Jesus to frame for you what is true and what isn't? Or do you ask men, known liars, people who are prone to be wrong and do it often, do you really believe Jesus is who he said he is? And if so, will you fully surrender to his teaching and the understanding that he offers? Will you trust him, follow him, obey him in all things and above all others? I mean, in all fairness, look, it took me a long time to answer those questions with a yes. But over time, I found that Jesus passes all the tests he not only knows what's best for me, but he wants what's best for me and you too. I know who he is. I know what he wants from me. And now I want that too. I'm willing to trust him. I believe him. I follow him. Starting with believing and following the teachings he left me in the Bible. Let me tell you two more quick stories before we end. I don't know how I can preach about beliefs and not talk about Blondin. You know, the guy who got on the tight wire across the Niagara Falls. Once he crossed in a sack. Uh, another time on stilts. Another time he did it on a bicycle. There was one time where he even carried a stove across and cooked an omelet while he's crossing. Who thinks of this stuff? He, he walks backwards across the tightrope into Canada and returned pushing a wheelbarrow. But then he says, you know, do you believe that I can push someone across in this wheelbarrow? And the crowd is amped. They're all like, yes, we believe in you, Blondin. We believe. She's really playing to the crowd, really getting them amped up. He says, yes, you do believe. Who will get in the wheelbarrow? <laughs> Let me tell you, it's crickets. <laughs> His manager got in the wheelbarrow. Uh, so many of us for so long are like that crowd. We believe, but 
I believe Jesus, but our butts are in the way. When are you going to move your butt out of the way? Mark 9, 14 through 27. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to to greet him. What are you arguing with them about, he asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son, who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of his speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Oh, unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground, and rolling around, he foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It is often thrown him in the fire or, or, or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us. Take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, <laughs> if I can, Everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the evil spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. Help my unbelief. Isn't that most of us? How we feel? Something we could all say? There are some crazy things that we believe, but listen, believing in Jesus isn't one of them. Trusting yourself, trusting others over Jesus, that's crazy. You've tried everything else. When are you going to fully, really try and trust Jesus? How long will you remain in your unbelief? How long will you trust known liars over the only one telling you the truth? Even here, Christ meets us. He doesn't leave us in that decrepit state. He receives us and helps us who would dare ask him to help us in our unbelief. Is that you this morning? Psalm 34, 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. He is. And if you don't know him, if you have never fully come to trust him, I'm asking you, would you today? Will you trust him? I got a challenge for you. Give me one good reason why you shouldn't. Just one. Psalm 23 is one of my favorite passages. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all of the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's made me realize that I've been through many dark valleys in my life. I have failed me. Others have failed me. But God never has. He has always been there to guide me back out of every valley that I've ever made my way into. Even the ones that I've been in and he got me out and I willfully chose to go back in. He never gave up on me even when everyone else did. I found reason after reason why I should put my trust in Jesus. I have continually let me down. 
Others have continually let me down, but Jesus has never been out of reach. Do you believe that? And if you don't, then ask him to help you with your unbelief. Acts 22.16 says, And now what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash your sins away, calling on his name. If you haven't, will you put your trust in Jesus today by coming forward and getting baptized? Or will you put your trust in Jesus and follow us on this journey as a church of finding out what the Lord's will is for this body. We would love to have you. Would you stand with me as we close in prayer? Dear God, Lord, we are so faulty in so many areas of our lives. But Lord, you don't ask us to be perfect. Because we never, we, we never will be until the day that we join you in heaven. But Lord, you do ask that we believe and that we have faith. And I pray that you would help those who are struggling with their unbelief this morning. Or with what to believe. I pray that you, the Holy Spirit would show those who are misguided or lost the way. And Lord, I pray that the rest of us, <laughs> that if we, we need to get up out of our seat and help show them the way, give us the push that we need to show others the way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.